The 11th century Tibetan yogi, Milarepa, said, take refuge in the solitude of the barren mountains, the snows or forests. In the wilderness cave, you have an open market where you can barter samsara for nirvana. How old is she? I think she's in her 80s because she was... 80... Yes, 84. Well, not the one from yesterday. So no, 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 I mean... It's, uh... To pursue the Dharma, the aspiring Buddhist needs to take refuge, go into retreat, and meditate. Behind this door lives Tetsun Ani. She is a nun who has been in solitary retreat for 45 years, never leaving the confines of this simple hut. She has distilled her entire religious practice to three simple mantras, prayers for the welfare of all sentient beings, recited again and again through every hour of her waking day. Now here is this woman by all accounts, extraordinarily beautiful young woman, devoted to the Dharma, who suddenly was kind of um, besieged by a suitor, a wealthy merchant who had the power to really demand betrothal. She escaped the suitor by climbing down through the hole of a cliffside latrine then fleeing to a monastery. And she was a legend in the region. Every Sherpa who marched toward Everest would go toward her retreat and pay homage to her. But no one had ever seen her. She had never been photographed. She had never certainly been uh, interviewed or talked to. She has not been totally without human contact. She receives food twice a day, and Sherab treats her medically. And I will never forget in my life that moment when that wooden door creaked open. And what did we find? We found, in fact, an incredibly um, ebullient, um, talkative, friendly, kind. Her first gesture was to give us cookies. And, and what did she do? She went right into the Dharma. And, and she sort of said to Matthew, you know, essentially, you know, it's great all that monastic stuff you guys do, and, you know, I respect it, and, and uh, it's quite, quite wonderful, but, you know, it really just comes down to a single mantra. She deeply prayed for all sentient beings to be free from all sufferings, uh, outer inner sufferings, and so from her heart she, she dedicates the merit as uh, she recites the, uh, the Omani Padme Hong, the mantra of Avalokiteshvara. <laughs> so it's like the one Dharma that contains his all. Omani Padme Hong. Yes. That, uh, so her life has been um, completely dedicated for 45 years to solitary retreat, uh -huh. to the recitation yes. of the mantra. Yes. And all directed toward the um, well-being of all sentient right. beings, almost like her heart, just spreading yes. compassion. Yes. <laughs> it all boils down to our own mind, the, the quality and the nature of our mind. So all the, whatever the Buddha has taught, you know, the, all the many, many, many aspects of his teaching, they were all meant to understand the nature of mind. I said the main thing is to give away all elaborate practice and simply remain in the Buddha in the Buddha nature, in the Buddha's mind, and that's all. And she said if she survives with her mind she'll come to visit me sometimes. <laughs> so I told her I'll prepare a nice cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Finding serenity through the Dharma is the experimental proof that validates the Buddhist science of the mind, just as a falling apple proves to us the existence of gravity. 
It may be hard to understand what this means, but it exists for the Tibetans. Many Tibetans do not believe that we went to the moon, but we did. We may not believe that they achieve enlightenment in this lifetime, but they do.